Hello. So in this uh, video lesson 5C, I will discuss the tradable emission permit uh, scheme in general, and then uh, focusing on the example of um, of this uh, carbon trading uh, system in Europe, known as uh, uh, ETS. So let's first start by, by a brief comparison of, of how this kind of tax and subsidy policy that we discussed in the previous video lesson uh, differs from a, from a tradable emission permit system. So uh, the idea with the, with the emissions tax or subsidy is to introduce a price for the emissions uh, that then will incentivize the polluters to then, uh, then either abate emissions or, or or, or uh, perhaps decrease uh, production also. So in, in other words, in the, in the tax and subsidies, uh, the government policymaker sets the, sets the price for the, for, the, for the pollution with the taxes or subsidies, and then the firms or the, or the producers then will, uh, will uh, the market mechanism will then de determine what is the quantity of abatement. Uh, sometimes it might be that uh, that uh, that uh, the policymaker might want to actually control for the quantity, and that uh, that the market mechanism uh, determine the price, and then this naturally leads to some kind of uh, tradable permit scheme. So as I've discussed in the in the one of the previous video lessons, uh, the the uh, marketable emissions differ from this kind of uh, command and control type of instruments where the where the government would uh, would uh, uh, set up some kind of uh, system of emissions permits, only in that uh, that then these uh, these uh, firms or producers they can they can trade these uh, these uh, emission rights in a, in a, in the in the marketplace. So here is the kind of a, a general outline of how the tradable emission rights system could could work. So I don't go through the each and every detail of the slide, uh, but uh, the main idea is that uh, that uh, first of all we need some kind of permit system that uh, that the polluters need to hold uh, enough permits in order to be allowed to to uh, um, emit this pollution to the to the environment, whether it is air pollution or or water pollution or some other kind of kind of. So we need this kind of permit system uh, uh, to start with. Then there is a the question in in uh, num point number three is that uh, these permits are issued to the to the polluting uh, polluting firms, and uh, there are there are at least two basic possibilities. There could be a, a competitive auction mechanism where the where the firms need to buy these permits. Or alternative, there could be some kind of uh, free initial allocation, which is referred to as uh, grandfathering. So very often this is then, then done so that there is some kind of previous uh, unregulated emission levels uh, set the basis for this kind of grandfathering. And then, of course, the government regulator can decrease the amount of permits compared to this, uh, this uh, unregulated situation. So this, this creates some kind of shortage for the for these permits, and then then the idea of what makes it that, that that this kind of permit mechanism, which changes it from the com command and control type of permit mechanism to to a um, tradable emission rights, is to establish a market for the permits that uh, that this uh, this uh, polluting firms uh, having either auctioned or or having received them uh, for free, then then can trade these permits and uh, in this uh, this general scheme there can be also some kind of um, uh, receptor uh, side or, or there can be um, can be some kind of like regional distribution it's possible to have like a, like a, like some kind of that, that there are certain certain permits in in a, in a, what is here referred to as a receptor area. So there could be like some kind of uh, also also regional market, but if you think about the global pollutants such as uh, such as greenhouse gases, then uh, then it makes sense that uh, that there are, there's like a, like a common pool of uh, of uh, of um, 
or, or, or common market for these emission permits. And it doesn't doesn't matter how this where these polluting firms are geographically located. So I will briefly discuss first the, the principle of how, how it works, and then I will also, also give some practical example of this uh, uh, European um, European uh, emission trading system for the for the greenhouse gas emissions. So let's think about this that how this kind of uh, market then will, will set the set the price if it is competitive market. And this figure tries to illustrate it with a simple example of an industry that consists of, of two firms. So we have two firms A and B, and their, their marginal cost curves are indicated, uh, indicated uh, here, which is this kind of upward sloping curves. And notice that in, in this example, we talk about um, abatement of emissions. So how much it costs for the firms uh, to, to decrease their level of emission for compared to the, to the initial unregulated level. Okay, so both firms A and B, they have some kind of initial level of uh, emissions. We can think here about, for example, the, the greenhouse gas emissions or carbon dioxide. And, uh, and then uh, the, the point here is that then, then with this kind of permit scheme, they, they are supposed to decrease the emissions. So in this, this example, the marginal cost curves are, are drawn as, as linear, but of course, in general, they could be also something something non-linear, perhaps uh, perhaps uh, convex increasing. So the idea here is that the, that the marginal cost curve of firm B is a little bit steeper. So that means that it's more, more expensive for firm B to abate emissions. Perhaps firm B has already uh, like more modern and uh, efficient technology uh, than 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 the the firm A, so then the firm A, which has perhaps somehow somewhat uh, older technology, has has lower uh, or or not not so steep marginal cost uh, cost curve. So it is this kind of little bit lower line. So the marginal costs are not increasing so 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 fast for the for the for the firm A. Another possibility is that that. Um, uh, no, I, I I don't go to go to that that thought. Sorry. So having these marginal cost uh, cost curves for A and B, then then we can think of what is the marginal cost of industry. So so in this simple example, industry consists only of these two firms A and B. So the marginal cost curve of the industry, we can we can show that it's the sum of these two two marginal costs. So it is this kind of most uh, lowest uh, lowest line here. And and some I mean in the in the uh, in the horizontal direction. So so in this example, suppose that the industry wide abatement level would be forty units. So the industry as a whole would have to abate the forty units of of pollutant. So in terms of the emission emission rights, this just means that if we have currently, for example. Uh, suppose that we have currently uh, industry emissions at the level of 100, then then abatement of 40 units would mean that uh, that this uh, regulator would issue permits with only 60 60 units. So this would mean that compared to the current level, uh, there's only 60 units of uh, of uh, pollution uh, acceptable. So so this illustrates that that the government regulator has like. Uh, a very uh, sharp control of, or the regulator can control exactly how much how much pollution will be generated by setting this kind of industry wide abate, abatement target, and as a result, they can control how many how many permits will be will be issued. So, irrespective of if it will be auctioned or if it will be done by grandfathering, if there is. Uh, um, competitive market for the for the permits, then in the in the market equilibrium, then the allocation of the emission rights would be so that uh, that um, uh, a price for for the permit would be become so that this uh, uh, marginal cost of the industry at the point forty 
that that determines the market price and this would be this this horizontal broken line indicates that this would be the determining this uh, this price of permit at the and to set it equal to the 75 uh, and that's that's the marginal abatement cost for the firms because if the permit in the in the in the tradable uh, emission rights market cost uh, costs uh, 75 per unit of of uh, of, of pollution then uh, both firms A and B are indifferent by by investing in the abatement themselves or versus versus buying par, buying uh, permits. On the other hand, if the cost of abatement is lower than seventy five, then it makes sense that they they decrease their emissions and sell the remaining remaining permits. So so this. Uh, Horizontal broken line indicates this. What is the what is the price of the permit, and this also indicates that that, that what is the marginal cost that that, that these firms A and, and B are, are are willing to willing to invest in the in the abatement. So then we can see that how much this each firm is is abating. Let's start from this firm B, which has the steeper marginal cost curve. So then we see that uh, that the point where this marginal cost curve for B crosses this 75 uh, uh, price line, then it means that uh, firm B would abate exactly 15 units of abatement. Uh, and then if we compare mar this marginal cost curve of firm A, it crosses at the point 25. So in summary, uh, firm A will abate 25 units of, uh, of emission and uh, firm B abates 15 and their sum is equal to 40, which was this uh, required industry-wide wide abatement. So the point of this figure is to illustrate that, uh, that with this kind of tradable emission rights scheme, then the government regulator can exactly determine the quantity of, of um, of abatement, uh, or, or in other words, it can determine the quantity of, of uh, emissions that are allowed in certain period of time, and then the, the tradable permit market then will determine that, that, that what will be the price of the permit, and uh, in the competitive market, then, then of course, uh, it will also help to allocate this uh, abatement such that, uh, that uh, a firm that has a lower marginal cost will abate more, than the the other firm that that, that uh, has higher marginal cost, so this really will indeed, in, assuming that we have a um, competitive uh, market for the for this um, for this uh, emission rights, that uh, that this uh, abatement uh, abatement is then efficiently allocated between these producers. And then, of course, the idea is that uh, that uh, the government regulator can then change this abatement target over time so then then uh, then if this is in the in the in the in the let's say initial period then in the later periods then this abatement uh, uh, industry wide abatement target can increase so for example move from 40 units to 50 units and then of course the, that that implies that the the price for the for the abatement rights will increase and that also then incentivizes the firms to to either abate themselves or, or buy, buy the remaining permits from the, from the market. So the advantage here is that the, the government doesn't need to know what are these marginal costs of, the, of, the, of firm A and firm B, or not even necessarily what is the marginal cost of the industry. By setting this kind of uh, uh, industry-wide abatement target and issuing the, the emission rights accordingly, then, then this kind of... Um, tradable permit scheme then will, will automatically uh, price this in the in the market and, and competition between the firms will then result as an efficient allocation of the permits that's the that's the idea of the of this kind of tradable emission right scheme so let's think about briefly the history of this uh, uh, European Union's uh, emissions trading system or ETS which is uh, which is perhaps the most uh, most comprehensive and 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 well well known uh, uh, emission trading system for the for the carbon dioxide emissions. So it was launched in in uh, two thousand five uh, 
So this initial phase from 2005 to 2007 was, was uh, known as this kind of pilot, uh, pilot phase. So the coverage of the emission um, uh, trading at this, uh, this initial stage uh, focused mainly on the most, uh, most heavily, um, heavily carbon intensive industries. So initially the, the scheme covered uh, 12,000 uh, installations and, and approximately 40% of the total CO2 emissions in the EU. And uh, actually when, when the, considering how successful the initial stage is that, uh, that uh, the verified emissions actually uh, increased during this uh, phase one. So this was mainly like in a with the purpose of uh, uh, setting up this kind of tradable emissions market and uh, and gaining experiences in the initial stage there was very very little actually abatement going on but then in the phase two which was from the year 2008 to 2012 uh, then uh, the coverage extended uh, so if there was initially 12,000 installations then uh, then it doubled more than doubled to 30,000 in the second phase and there were also non-EU members, uh, Norway, Iceland, and Liechtenstein joined the uh, joined the scheme, and and uh, in this second stage, then the emission started to decrease a little bit already. So then there was uh, phase three, which uh, which um, uh, coincided with the uh, or, or covered the period of of two thousand thirteen to two thousand twenty. And uh, there, there started to be much more, more uh, tighter limits, and there was in inclusion of more sectors, more other other type of greenhouse gases than just uh, carbon dioxide. And uh, especially important was also that instead of grandfathering the emissions, then a larger share of these permits were auctioned. Actually, so slowly but surely, then, then the the this kind of trading system has become uh, more and more uh, having having more tighter tighter limits or or having more more serious uh, uh, abatement targets and we are currently living in this phase uh, four that lasts from twenty twenty one to twenty thirty and and in this phase there is then a linear reduction factor. That uh, that this uh, overall emissions caps is gradually reduced uh, uh, by some amount each year. So currently it is like two point two percent each year that uh, there will be less less uh, emission rights. And um, and there is also some kind of kind of price controls that this price of the the uh, uh, price of the emission permit cannot cannot drop too too low. So if you look at the price development in this European ETS system, then uh, in the initial phases, uh, uh, remember that it started in 2000, 2005, the price of the, the, um, the emission, emission rights uh, initially was somewhere at, at uh, 20 euro per ton. But then as you see in this figure, the price, price of these ETS permits dropped almost to zero in, in 2007. And and this is of course very much caused by the by the by the financial crisis in the in the USA. So suddenly there was not so much need also for the for this kind of uh, uh, polluting. So the price of the emission rights also also dropped. And uh, there have been of course. Then then there was uh, was sort of recovery from the from the uh, financial crisis, but uh, for most of the uh, years from from. Uh, uh, in the initial phases, uh, there had been had been uh, such such large amount of these emission rights that uh, that the price of these uh, ETS uh, uh, emission permits has been uh, very very low, and that also of course has led the policymakers to then then uh, remember in the previous slide. Uh, so we had these different phases, and particularly from this uh, 2013 to 2020. So after 2020, you see in this in this fourth phase, the price of these uh, these ETS um, permits uh, uh, started to increase quite substantially. 
So that is partly, of course, uh, due to this um, uh, strict policy. So there is this kind of, uh, uh, because of course the policymakers saw that these emission rights prices were very, very low. So then they, they took more, more ambitious targets for this abatement. Uh, but then, of course, if you if you remember what happened in in uh, 2022, we had this kind of serious energy crisis, uh, um, when the when the Russia invaded uh, invaded Ukraine in in February 2022, and uh, that caused also great turmoil and the on the on the energy markets, which of course also affects the 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 uh, emission trading, because suddenly. Uh, you would have to have to then find some kind of other energy sources in Europe than than when the when the um, imports of natural gas from from uh, from Russia dried out, and and there would be sanctions uh, placed on 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 Russian energy. So so then suddenly then then also the the prices of this uh, this ETS increased, uh, but also also partly due to this kind of policy of of having having a. Uh, uh, less permits available. So also, of course, this kind of very sharp increase in this ETS ETS uh, uh, permits has also further increased the, the energy costs in, in Europe. And in some sense, it's it's very unfortunate timing that this uh, kind of stricter uh, pollution targets are rising the price exactly at the same time as, as the energy prices uh, uh, were rising uh, due to the due to the war in Ukraine. So, but but clearly, when when we when we have reached this kind of prices close to one hundred euros per ton, then suddenly the, then then uh, uh, firms that need to need to need to buy this kind of uh, emission permits, then suddenly of course have a great incentive to uh, decrease their energy consumption and find find other ways of uh, of, uh, of uh, generating or buying energy. Thank you very much for your attention. So, in the in the fourth lesson for this for this fifth theme, I will then discuss some criteria of, of what what makes a good uh, um, good policy instrument. See you then.